Now coming to the last part of chapter 6, which will be the fifth and the sixth seals. The seventh seal is going to come in a little later, after chapter 7. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> and it's very important. But for now, in chapter 6, verse 9, we have the fifth seal, and then we'll go into the sixth seal. And remember, the seals cover the entire church age, the time that men can and will be saved, the time that those chosen by the Father, their names in the book of life, are being released from their debt, released from their sin in the blood of the Lamb as he breaks the seals th throughout the entire church age for the revealing of the sons of God. And in verse 9, and when he, and remember, in all these seals, the he is the Lamb of God. It's the Lord. He is the one breaking these seals. He's the one that's released the debt against us. He's the one that's paid that penalty. And when he broke the fifth seal, and you'll notice here, there's no living creatures. The four living creatures were in the first four seals. Like I said, the living creatures stand between God and man between heaven and earth. And now, there's no mention of a living creature. The Lord breaks one of the seals, and I saw, John says, underneath the altar, the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. So we have no creature here, because these people are in heaven. They're underneath the altar. Some try to teach you and tell you that when you die, you lie in the grave. Or if you sunk in the ocean, you lie at the bottom of the ocean. This ain't true. Because what did Paul say in 2 Corinthians 5, 6, 7, and 8? Therefore, be always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And in verse 8, he says, We are of good courage. I say, and I prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And here, in the fifth seal, we have these those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. So he is including, these are included in their forgiveness and their debt having been paid, and these people are right under the throne of God. They're not sleeping somewhere waiting. They're waiting under the throne of God. And in verse 10, it says, And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will thou refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who are on the earth? So they're underneath the altar. They, these are the saints. These are the people, Old Testament, New Testament, that have been slain for the word of God. And they are right under the throne. They're as close to God as you can get, having paid the ultimate price of presenting their body a living sacrifice, and they sacrificed their life and their body for the word of God, for God himself. They gave up this life, and they are right there beneath the throne, and they're asking God how long it will be. Remember, this was 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago, and they're saying back then, how long will it be before you avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number, listen here, saints, until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, who were to be killed, even as they had been, should be completed also. This seal is covering those who have died and are waiting and have paid the price with their life and they 
have their name in the book of life. And they have been released from their debt. And they are waiting. But he says, he says, their fellow, until the number of their fellow servants and their brother, brethren who were to be killed even as they had been killed should be completed. So this seal covers those Old Testament, New Testament, who've been slain for the word of God, for the testimony of God, and they are waiting for their blood to be, vengeance to be taken on the earth. And he tells them to wait longer, and this was over 2,000 years ago. So the fifth seal covers those who were slain, and they're given a special place because they have laid down their life. Their life has been taken. So many Christians live a worldly, even quite ungodly life, and then they die. These saints gave up their life for the word, for the living God. They presented themselves a living sacrifice. And this is a special place for them right under the throne of God, right under the altar. They're sitting there waiting. And then in verse 12, and I looked, and now verse 12, and I looked when he broke the sixth seal. John looks now. Something's caught John's attention. And I looked when he broke the sixth seal. And there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth, made of hair. And the whole moon became like blood. What's going on in the sixth seal? The sixth seal covers the tribulation. Remember, these seals cover the entire church age from the, his resurrection through the entire church age right down to the end of the tribulation. All those in the Father's book of life, all those who can and will be saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and the sixth seal covers the tribulation period from beginning to end. So the sixth seal is the breaking of that seal, the releasing of that debt for those who are waiting and serving him throughout the tribulation. And the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. And in verse 13, saints, we've been told so many crazy things about the book of Revelations, so many far-fetched things. And some of these things we're going to read now have been just distorted beyond my belief. And in verse 16, it says, And the stars of the sky fell to earth as a fig tree cast its unripe grapes when shaken by a great wind. And the sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island were, moved out of, were removed out of their place. So many teachers tell you that the stars of heaven are going to fall down on the earth, which is ridiculous. They're light years away, and they're bigger than our sun, most of them. They would destroy this entire part of the universe. And the sky was split like a scroll when it's rolled up, and they think the whole sky is going to split open over the earth. And then they say and they tell you every mountain and island will be moved out of their place across the earth. Could you imagine that? There'd be nothing left to this earth. The, the destruction, the, the turmoil would be so vast, it would be the end of all things. And they would say, oh, well, that's the end of the tribulation. You're going to find out very shortly that can't be. And there are people here. So what is happening here? Verses 12, 13, and 14 are the beginning of the tribulation. Because it says that Babylon will fall, and we're going to get into that later, and I can't get into it now. Although it's very important, we got to wait until the book, the way takes us there. But this is the beginning of the tribulation. And the sky is going to be split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Saints, I'll tell you now. What is going to happen in one hour of one day to set off the tribulation 
And that's how you can number the days of the tribulation to the day they're numbered is because when that event happens, the tribulation will start in one hour of one day. That's what the word says. And that event that's going to happen is going to be an asteroid hitting the earth. And we're going to talk more about it. But where that asteroid hits, it's going to come down. And if you've seen any of the modern films or documentaries about an asteroid hitting and how it does, it comes down and it just rolls up like a giant atomic bomb and rolls like a scroll, like an atomic explosion, the, the cloud that comes up from it. This is even vastly bigger and rolls <clears throat> like a scroll rolling. And when it says that every mountain and every island were moved out of their place, it's not talking about the whole world. It's talking about where that asteroid hits. And later we'll see where it's going to hit and we'll see the effects of it. <clears throat> but this will set off the tribulation. The sixth seal is the releasing of the debt, the gathering up of the saints whose names are in the book of life that are in the tribulation, that go through the tribulation, that come to Christ in the tribulation. The sixth seal covers the tribulation, and that's what's happening here. Where that asteroid hits, the mountains will be destroyed. The islands will be pushed out of their place, and it will rise up like a scroll. That's what it's describing. And in verse 15, verse 15 to 17, more go to the end of the tribulation, but it will have some impact too at the beginning of the tribulation, because verse 15 says, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and amongst the rocks of the mountains. We see in Isaiah chapter 2 verses 17, 18, and 19, we read, and the pride of man will be humbled, and the fortresses of men will be abased, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. But the idols will become completely, the idols will completely vanish. And listen to this, saints, in verse 19. And men will go into caves of the rocks and into holes of the ground before the terror of the Lord. And behold, the splendor of his majesty when he arises to make the earth tremble. There'll be giant earthquakes. That's what was mentioned in verse 12. When the asteroid hits, there'll be a big earthquake. And as an asteroid hits, the stars of heaven falling, which it's talking about, it kicks up a giant plume of molten rock and it will fall down. I saw this one day in a vision that the Lord gave me, and as it went up, the rocks just started falling down, and they were burning like stars with pillars of clouds behind them, and as these fall upon the earth, the only hope people will have because they'll shoot far up into the atmosphere and slowly start to come down over a period of time, the only place people will have to hide is in caves or underground or in undercar, undercar, uh, ground garages or cellars or basements or sewers. It's the only place where this is falling from the asteroid that people will be safe. And in verse 16, and they said to the rock, to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who is able to stand? This is the end of the tribulation. Because in his presence and when he's coming in power and glory, these evil people, these that followed the kingdom of the Antichrist, these who have rejected him, these that went out to fight him, will want to hide in the ground. They'll want to hide in the caves. So 
the fifth seal covers those that have been slain for their testimony. The sixth seal covers all those saints who will go into the tribulation, be saved during the tribulation. That sixth seal, that breaking, that paying of that debt covers the entire tribulation. And what we see in verses 12, 13, and 14 is what will start the tribulation in one hour of one day, and that will be an asteroid hitting the earth. They have hit the earth since the beginning of the earth, and one is going to hit the earth again. And that will set off the tribulation in one hour of one day. Later, we're going to see where it's going to be. We'll know where it's going to be, and its effects upon the whole earth. As that asteroid hits, it will undo the world's governments, and that will give the Antichrist the power and the place to move to take such authority. And now we have all but the seventh seal. And the seventh seal doesn't come up yet because in chapter seven, he's going to take us to see and know more of those who are saved, who he has paid the price for, and who they are in chapter seven. It'll be another glorious chapter, another glorious revelation, and as I said, we're now going into chapter 7. And other than to show that the, the ones who are in the tribulation, that he's paid their price too. He's paid the price for their sin. Other than to show that in a few verses here, that those in the tribulation will be saved. Anybody that tells you the church is gone and there is nobody here, it's God destroying the earth and evil men is so wrong. You'll see throughout the rest of the Bible this message is to the church, and there's going to be a huge part of the church, and the church is going to grow in glory and power during and throughout the tribulation. So we've now come to the sixth seal. Well, he'll show us a few more of those in the, that are listed in that scroll, in that book of life, and then we'll have the mystery and the revelation the wonderful revelation of the seventh seal after chapter 7.